Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep 269 I do believe In fact I'm pretty sure it is because I've been uh, working on my website. My new website is still the same address, but it's, now it's a different website, but still the same, kind of, if that makes sense. So please only listen to this and you can safely close your eyes because it's gonna be boring. Boring. Really, really boring. So, oh, I don't know what day it is. It's the sixth, yes, the sixth of December. Friday, the sixth of December. The reason I know the date, other than the fact that I just know what day it is, is because tomorrow, the seventh of December is Anthony Joshua fighting Andy Ruiz Jr. for the heavyweight championship of the world and I'm very very much looking forward to it so there you go um, before I before I really bore you with my you know the latest details of my life I I've had a few people contact me the last couple of days regarding Spotify and not just the the Let Me Bore You to Sleep podcast, but also some of the others uh, were not working. So this is my understanding of what has happened, and this is what I've done to fix the issue. Um. I've had previous podcasts hosted um, in the past and they've been submitted to Spotify and what Spotify does is it downloads all of the episodes so it doesn't doesn't just use the RSS feed where it links to the recording it actually down physically I say physically but it literally downloads the episode onto the Spotify server so because I have changed the host for uh, for example well, all of my podcasts about a year ago and a couple um, this year that I started and uh, I got rid of those podcasts but the podcast host not the actual podcast and this is getting confusing the more words I use I know but so the bottom line is some of those old podcasts were not being updated because the original podcast host was no longer there yet Spotify had downloaded those episodes so it looked like it was still available And now, 
and they've been doing this for the last few months over time they've started to delete the episodes of any podcasts that are no longer updated they're no longer active which means some people have been listening to the let me bore you to sleep or the deep sleep whisper hypnosis sleep hypnosis weekly uh, or the other like sleep podcasts and suddenly they've disappeared and they can't get onto Spotify well they can get on Spotify but there's nothing there so what I've done is I've gone through Spotify and I have found the relevant podcasts that work perfectly uh, the ones that are connected to my Spreaker account my Spreaker and that's where all my podcasts are hosted permanently they're there all the time 24 hours a day and every time I produce a new recording Spotify will get updated I don't know how long it takes but usually sort of the same day so if you're on the let me bore you to sleep podcast it should have 268 or 269 recordings when this is uploaded or up you know when it's been updated of course if you're listening to this in March 2029 then there's going to be a few thousand whether they'll all be available on Spotify I don't know but they will be available on my website jessonnewland.com because most podcasts like uh, um, like iTunes but it's now Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts they'll only list maybe the last 250 recordings maybe less maybe the last 100 recordings and because I've got so many you might not get to to be able to listen to all of them on Spotify or other places but you can if you go to Spreaker or if you go to my website so everything's on there listed all the way down to one or all the way up you know from one onwards so I hope that makes sense so what I've done what I've done is there's a page on my website and it's in the menu it just says Spotify it's called Spotify if you click on that I've listed the top uh, let me put you to deep sleep see if I know. anxiety so the top six podcasts that I have the most popular ones I've got them listed with the correct address to Spotify with the link you can just click on but you can click on it but you can also I've written it down as well so you can see the link rather than just clicking on something so you can see what the link actually is um, so you could, I, guess, I guess you could copy and paste or whatever but you can just click on it if you want I've also pasted um, this information on Facebook and Twitter so I hope it's useful that's that's kind of it um, I'm constantly I don't know if the word amazed or surprised um, pleased possibly but every now and then I get a little what is it a song Every now and then I get a little bit sound and I wonder what I feel a bit. See, when I think of uh, Bonnie Tyler, 
the total eclipse of the heart. See, I was in hospital having my appendix out, and I, I pretended to have appendicitis to get out of school. Apparently, my psychologist said that that's quite extreme to have an operation to avoid going to school. I never thought of it that way. <laughs> Weird. Um, but yeah, so I, at that time, Total Eclipse of the Heart was the big song. And I also think Minute Work Down Under as well and I just sure it's quite weird I remember because I think I asked for the because I had a uh, I was about 12 at the time maybe 11 12 and they didn't need to shave me so I'm just I mean I, I didn't <laughs> I didn't have a beard that's what I mean yeah of course and they they had to like a, a hospital DJ radio station thing and they came round and said do you want a song I said yeah okay but I was a bit confused because I thought well he's not even got a guitar on him well, what's he going to do a cappella so I waited and he said well what do you want I said well I'd quite like a Michael Jackson beat it could you sing that for me he said what do you mean sing it I said what do you mean what do you mean sing it he said I'm a, de I'm a DJ I'm going to play this song on the radio for you I said oh in that case I'll have Bonnie Tyler, Total Eclipse of the Heart, and my second option is Beat It, or PYT. Yeah. Although I do like The Girl Is Mine. Anyway, you know, the thing is, I never realised, but first I'd never, I had been hot in hospital before I had my adenoids out because I was partially deaf in one of my ears and they took my adenoids out in order to try and get me hearing back and I don't remember there being a like a DJ or radio station that time the thing is, when I had my when I had my adenoids out, I was in this. It was rubbish. It was really. It was not. It was not a nice holiday, really. I mean, it was great to be off school and stuff, but I just it was this in this almost like a dungeon. Well, it wasn't really a dungeon. It was a hospital, but it was really just dim and grim and. Just, just not very pleasant, really. And there was nothing there. It was, and they came round, right? I was saying that like you're listening. Yeah, right. You're just gonna get your attention. They came round on one of the evenings because I was in hospital for probably two or three days. I don't know. It wasn't a long time, but those were the days where you. We used to stay in hospital for operations. I mean, now you have major heart surgery and you're out within 10 minutes. So it's, you know, it's different now. But back then, you know, I mean, now you basically, if you, if you get an ambulance and you're pregnant, if you give birth in the ambulance, then they just take you home. I don't, I don't know if that's true. But, this lady, and it was a lady, she came round. I don't know if she was a nurse or I don't know, but she might have been a volunteer. But I don't, I've got no idea. I'd, I didn't get to see her CV and didn't ask for her credentials, job experience. I didn't, didn't, you know, I was eight, I think, at the time. 
Um, I was just, I was too focused on making sure that no one kidnapped my teddy bear. Which is a fair enough thing, I think. Anyway, she said, uh, she came round, do you want a cup of tea, cup of coffee? And she had like a, a trolley full of stuff. And I don't think I was allowed to eat anything. But she said, you can have a drink. And she said, uh, you can have tea, coffee. I don't know if coffee was on it. I don't know if I was allowed coffee. I'm not sure if coffee was allowed for children back then. I don't know. And she said, I think the other options was Horlicks, possibly hot chocolate. Although I think if 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 anything chocolatey was available, I probably would have I would have wanted that inside me. But um I can't remember. And then she said, or oh, Horlicks. Now, I'm not saying that I'm like really adventurous. I have been. Uh, but I've never had Horlicks before. Yet at the same time, I've never been very good and still, I don't really know why, but never been great at making decisions that are really important, like what are you going to have to drink? I think partly, I think partly is because when I was little, I never had any decisions to make. I never had any choices. I was just, you know, just given what I got and that was it so then I had to start making decisions from the age of seven and I kind of didn't know how to make them really and I should I have the Horlicks should I not have the Horlicks should I have the tea should I not have the tea where's Teddy oh there he is okay should I have the I think there might be some juice as well. I don't mean steroids. I mean, uh, juice, you know, like strawberry juice or orange. What well, would be squash, probably, to be fair. And uh, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to give Horlicks a try. Not Horlicks. Um, what's the other one? Bovril. I'm going to give Bovril a try. Never tried it before. And I thought, it's a new thing, but it's hardly hand gliding, is it? It's not like I'm, it's just a drink. I'm not doing anything too courageous. That's what I thought until I tasted it. And... It's not the worst thing I've ever had in my mouth, but it's is up there. It was just utterly. I mean, for me, I didn't like it. Some people love it, so I'm not going to get too wrapped up in being negative towards something that other people enjoy because that's just there's no need, really, is it? It's because we all like what we like and. I don't want to sit listening to someone slagging off my favourite food or my my favourite TV program. I find that annoying. You know when you say to someone, they say, oh, we're going to do the weekend, so I'm going to watch the X Factor final. And they start going on, oh, that's rubbish. I don't like them anymore after that. <laughs> I genuinely don't. Like... That's just cruel what you've done there. That's just, that's just, that's nasty. Just be nice. We all like different things. You know, it'd be different if I said, oh, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna get a tank and drive through a school. Yeah, you could say, well, actually, no, that's not very nice. Just 
that's wrong. I'm just only watching the X Factor. You know, it's only something, it's a nice thing. For me, if you don't like it, then don't watch it. But I happen to like it. Although saying that, I've not watched this year's. It's a Celebrity X Factor and I've not watched it. I watched probably a half hour of one of the episodes and I didn't like it. It's just... I don't know, it just don't work for me. If it's a celebrity. I think the whole... And then missed out all the... You know, the auditions and the, I just... I like the build-up, you know, the whole thing. And... Well, I didn't really get into it last year either. It has for me gone downhill a bit and um, perhaps needs a little bit of I don't know they started changing things trying to almost match the voice because a voice was on the other channel but then it got transferred onto ITV so it's not on BBC one anymore but there's the chair challenge that was on the voice and they kind of copied that. And for me, it's like, don't, don't start copying. And uh, I thought, what's next? It's going to have swivelly chairs. So they're going to have their back to the contestants. Now, I don't, you know, which is unique to the voice. That's why the voice, when it first started, was so gripping really and um, because of that they've got their back to the uh, to the person singing so they're not judging them on what they look or what they're wearing or what funny colour their hair is or how much of the stage they're taking up you know it's it's specifically about the voice which you know, personally, I think that's what singing should be about. But you know, it's, uh, I'm not a record producer, so what can I say? I know the image, because let's face it, right? Even you got to tap into reality with these things. I suppose it is what it is, and Elvis Presley, Elvis Presley. That he wouldn't have been as successful if he hadn't been beautiful. I mean, he's a, he was a beautiful looking man, wasn't he? You know, nearly as not quite in my level, not quite as good as me, but you know, if he'd have turned on, let's face it, if Elvis Presley had turned up on stage on telly looking like me, but sounded like Elvis, he probably would have had a hit. He'd have had some fans, you know, but he would not have been. He wouldn't have had the same. Oh, let's face it, he'd have been more popular, wouldn't he? He'd have been more popular. If he looked like me, he wouldn't have even had to sing. Just get up there and just stick his tongue out, wibble his hicks. Wibble his hicks. Wickle, wickle his hip. Wib, wibble. Wi wiggle his hips. And it'd have been done. I think, yeah, that would have been enough. I also think that if the Beatles had been around when colour television was just standard, I don't know if they'd have been quite as popular. So it's you know it's very. Uh, which I find strange visual because people used to say about Madonna oh you only like Madonna because she's attractive and like, well no I can't see Madonna when I'm listening to her well you can if I'm watching her on a video but I don't I can't watch that because I've worn out the video it was uh, Papa Don't Preach I do that, have a video of her singing Papa Don't Preach. This is when I was 16, so I'm not going to apologise. 
I was 16 years old and I watched and rewatched and rewatched and rewatched that video of her and that was my favorite song but that video is the one music video that I watched the most in my entire life during that month I watched that it just it, I think I wore the telly out as well I mean the telly just used to turn itself off sometimes like come on Jason seriously give me a break mate can't we watch something else but I used to love love that video but I used to like listening to her albums and it wasn't because of how she looked Is which kind of goes completely against what I just said then but that was the only video I, I liked Like a Prayer I liked that video as well but I prefer the song more than the video it was her songs it was her music that I liked and when I was listening to her music I wasn't thinking about her dancing and wobbling and whatever I was thinking of what I was doing so if I was peeling potatoes or cooking the pies or you know at work listening to Madonna because I used to get into her early sometimes just to, so I didn't have to spend time with other people. So I'd go in and uh, get in at like seven or something, and so I st and then get get loads done, and then just go and have like an hour or two break before like work. I didn't have to sort of I could get as much done as possible, and just chill out and listen to Maddie singing. Yeah. So I think, didn't she have three albums at that point? By 86, because she had Holiday. Do, 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 the shining star. Dee, be, dee, be, dee. You know who you are. I forget that, but anyway. Um, I'm going to have to listen to Elton John based on how he looked although he did there was a time do you know my favourite video of Elton's is the it's the one I saw on Pornhub <laughs> no it's it's the one the Christmas one and the reason I like that is because he's smiling And it looks like a genuine smile. Like it genuinely looks happy. And I found that, you know, over the last pretty much since I've been an adult, he's been a bit grumpy. He's a bit of a grumpy kind of, you know, when I was a kid, he was. I don't know, because this is a 70s, wasn't it? The um, Christmas song. I just think it's really good. And he was, he looked happy. He was having fun. And I did like Nikita. Nikita, did you ever know anything about my home? That's a... Uh, got into that song I'm sure it was about 1985 I think and he used, to, he used to listen to it it tapped into emotions for some reason I do have songs that tap into emotions don't necessarily always understand what the emotions are or why but I kind of, I don't know, sort of, I go with it, you know, if that makes sense.
so I couldn't decide Bovril or not so I went with it and the lady who was serving I said to her look if I don't like it can I have something else and she said no you took up enough of my time you've been a very very naughty boy I like, what so I said okay I'll have Bovril and then she went away she squeaked I thought she had a squeaky walk but in hindsight I think it was the trolley I thought she may have been like a half tin man you know from the Wizard of Oz needed a bit of oil needed to oil a crack the cracks like you know in the between the the bones and stuff you know what I mean the cracks in the metal the, do you remember you remember the, the Wizard of Oz you know when he's stuck and he's got the axe and it's raining or something and he's like what's that what did you say then the scare cries out I think I think he I think he needs to oil him I think she says you need to oil him and Dorothy says oh you need to be oiled oh then she does the thing doesn't she and she unoil, he oils his jaw so he could talk and oiled his in the cracks um, between the metal so the like shoulder blades the cracks there uh, oiled his crack in either side of his jaw and stuck oil in his the cracks of his um, the joints of his knees and stuff those cracks there yeah I think I've covered myself there so so that's it, it was um, but she wasn't I don't think she was a tin man I mean I, who knows there's no way of knowing is there you know the other day I, I got on a bus and I put my stuff on the right hand side of the bus because I had uh, some bags I think yeah and I went to sit down I trod on someone's foot and I said sorry to the foot obviously and then I sat down like I moved chairs let this uh, lady who had a baby whatever I sit down I didn't let her I just offered my seat and I sat on a different seat and I looked over and it was a young girl that I I don't know young she's probably 13 I don't know whatever and I looked at her foot and it was flat it was squashed flat <laughs> <laughs> she looked like a clown's foot seriously and I felt so guilty because she's a tiny little thing and I'm like this heavy quite a lot of weight to be putting on on her foot and it was just there and you could see the toes were throbbing <laughs> like a cartoon <laughs> <laughs> And I thought, you know what? I wouldn't want to have my toes stood on by someone like me. That's God. That must must have hurt. Her. So I feel a bit. I felt mildly guilty. Well, no, I didn't feel guilty, but I f just thought, oh, because that probably would have made me scream and cry if that had been me. I'd have been, oh, my foot. 
My tootsies. Ow, ow. What have you done, you nasty man? Look at my foot. I was a size 4, now I'm a size 12. Look. You've got a flipper now. Basically, it wasn't my fault though. It's the bus driver. Well, he's the one that let me on the bus. <laughs> no, he's the one that... They don't let you sit down before they, like, take off again. I say take off, I don't mean, like, fly. But just, like, let me sit down, please. It happened to my nan years and years and years ago. And she was probably in her 60s, I'd say. Maybe 70s. Yeah, probably 70s. Maybe 80s, I don't know. She did live a long time. But she got on a bus and the bus driver pulled off and she just went flying. I mean, she was partly annoyed, but on the other side, she discovered she... <laughs> she she discovered... <laughs> She discovered she could fly. <laughs> it's so childish. I can't believe that. <sighs> okay, I'm back. I'm back in the room. <laughs> There's no stopping her then. Just flying around all the place. So I just, just stay on the ground. But I don't need to. <laughs> she phoned them she phoned up the hospital she said yeah I just want to cancel my varicose vein removal operation I won't be losing I won't be needing to use my legs anymore <laughs> yep I can fly oh yeah yeah that's right yeah it's a bus bus driver oh I'm not the first one to learn how to fly oh okay wow here's me thinking I was unique I didn't like the Bovril at all and I could probably drink Bovril now and not get too I don't think I'd be emotionally affected by it because I know that I can pour it down the drain I can swear at it I can chuck it out the window. I can get another drink of something else. But there, in the hospital, I had nothing else to take the taste away. So yeah, it wasn't. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Didn't, 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 didn't like it. So yeah, uh, what else? I I had to go to. Well, I had a I had a doctor's appointment yesterday. I got an itch. Just got to scratch it. Oh, it's better. I had to go. I had had a doctor's appointment booked it six weeks ago because the the doctor's surgery the uh, staff at the surgery you know the receptionist staff and it's you know usually I know usually uh, doctors receptionists are really really helpful and really kind and friendly normally as we all know but on this occasion, they seem to be, um, I don't know, just a bit off with me. And I, they insisted, they refused, in fact, six weeks ago, to give me another prescription unless I had an annual review. Annual, an, annual, 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 yeah, annual review. No, the, uh, yeah, and... The 
Did I ever tell you about my friend? It's a totally true story. Totally true. I just, I mean, this is for those of you who are still awake, you know. I know some people listen just for the company and just for something to do, but um, a friend, an old friend of mine from years ago, he was constipated and he went to the doctor because of the constipation, because he had, because it had been like two weeks or something like that. Anyway. And I'm not going to go into any details whatsoever. I'm just going to make it. I'll let. I'll let you. You know. I'm just going to tell you the facts, and then, <laughs> then I'll move on. And he's older. Well, he's always been older than me. Yeah. Yeah. He's always always been older. And. He was probably, probably about my age at the time, maybe early 50s. And he's about 90 now, I think. And he went to the doctor. He said, doctor, constipated. And the doctor said, well, I've got some medication I can give you. And you can take that and he wrote a prescription out for him I think those were the days where they used to actually write out a prescription not print it out see things have changed and uh, he said thanks doctor see you later mate got a fly he said what you can fly my friend said no it's just, it's just an expression he said, oh, thank God for that. I said, why? He said, well, I'll make a little bit of money every time I send someone for, to have their varicose veins removed. But I keep, people keep cancelling their, their operations, so I'm, I'm down. I've lost, lost at least £20 this month. And my friend said, well, why, why are you telling me this? And the doctor said, well, just trying to kind of connect some of the stories that Jason randomly tells and trying to quite connect them together. And my friend said, well, what's the point in that? They're just all made up stuff anyway, isn't it? And the doctor said, well, I don't know. I don't know, you know him. You know him, but I don't really know him that well. I'm just part of his uh, imagination. I don't know, you know. He said, yeah, well, so am I. So, oh. And they both had a big hug, a little bit of a kiss and cuddle. And, and then my friend said, I've got to go now. He said, the doctor said, ah, oh, ah, oh, wait a minute. And he started tapping away at his laptop. So my friend he said, sit down, wait a sec. So my friend sits down. So he's tapping, typing. My friend starts to get a bit worried. He said, what were you doing? He said, oh, don't worry. No, so I'm just checking my emails. I'll be right with you. He said, and then the doctor got excited. Started jumping up and down. But without a trampoline, if you can imagine that. And he said, uh, I can't believe it. And my friend said, what? He said, I've only just been offered, right, a million pound. A million pound? Yeah, all I've got to do, because I've there's uh, someone in Africa has, uh, they're like a really important person in Africa, and they've got, uh, they're going to send me the money because there's no one to inherit it so they're gonna they're they're gonna transfer 10 million into my bank account right and they're gonna give me a million for doing it all I've got to do 
is send them £10,000 to cover the costs of the transfer and then they're gonna, and I've got to send them my bank details of course, and then they will put the 10 million into my bank account and then I'll, they'll gonna transfer, then I'll get to keep one million of it. And my friend said, wow, that's good. He said, yeah, isn't it just? And my friend said, yeah, well, that's lovely. Can I go now? He said, no, no, no. I said, why? He said, well, according to your chart, you're due a prostate exam. My friend said, what? He said, well, because of your age, you're in your 50s, it says here that you've never had a prostate exam. My friend said, well, not officially. He said, what do you mean? He said, well, not, not by a medical practitioner. Huh? He said, don't worry about it. Anyway, what, what, what are you saying? He said, well, well, you're here, so we'll do, a, we'll do it now. We'll do the um, prostate exam now. And my friend said, I don't think it's a very good idea, do you? He said, I insist we've got to do it. It's very important. It's part of the NHS guidelines now and we need to get this done. And my friend kept saying, I really don't advise it. You know, look at the reason I've come to see you in the first place. This is not a good idea. Doctor said it'll be fine, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. All I'm gonna end this little story on is just to say that it was it wasn't fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they could use that room for about a month. They had to had to demolish that part of the building. <laughs> Well, actually, I didn't have to demolish her. You know, part of it was actually demolished by my friend. But again, I don't want to go into details. There's that much pressure. And uh, so, so I was in going to the doctor. So I, I needed to basically get that. And also I was going to see the doctor about my lower back. So I've had a, uh, it's not about having a lower back, because I know we all have them. Um, but it's about, I'm going to go to the doctor and say, what, what is this thing? What, above my hips, what is it? I've just, I can't, I can't, it's your lower back. Oh, no, it's not that kind of situation. It's more... I get you know issues with it it's, it's like a gradual thing that's happened gradually which is what most f gradual things seem to do uh, it's been over like 20 years it's just gradually it's worn it's just worn you know it's not they're not the only part of me that's worn but it's the the one that people is more noticeable to me and but then the other night I wasn't very well and I thought I'm going to go to the doctors I do the prescription thing that you know I have to do because it's a double appointment and I'll mention you know and I'll use that next the second part of the appointment to discuss the um, the medical stuff that happened a few days ago so the appointment was one o'clock, okay. I walk to the bus stop and I get there at 10 past one. I walk very slowly and I decide that I'm gonna get there because the bus is supposed to arrive at half past 12. It's only 
it's about a 10 minute journey to you know where the doctors is and I've always got there early pretty much always got there early and still had to wait for 20 30 minutes after my appointment slot to be seen you know got in there early people have turned up after my appointment time and been seen before me that kind of things like okay I'll try not to do that anymore because I'm waiting for 50 minutes for no reason so I thought I'll just get there I'll get there quarter to one ten to one and that'll be fine I'm not going to get seen till probably 20 past anyway well I thought if the bus turns up early I'll catch it well <laughs> the bus did not turn up early and in fact the bus did not get there till gone one o'clock or probably one minute to one so I was waiting and waiting and I think it's 10 to 1 I phoned the doctor surgery or quarter to 1 and I was waiting for a while until I got through to someone and I said here's the situation I've been waiting for a bus for 45 minutes or whatever it ain't turned up the buses are usually pretty good they're pretty reliable normally in a reliable kind of a way and I have a double appointment at one o'clock and they said can I take your name can I take you to the birth and I said yeah and I said uh, they said well if you're not here at one then you lose your appointment I said what? I said if you're not here by one then you're going to lose your appointment I said I booked this appointment six weeks ago I'm coming because of because you've f basically forced me to come for the prescription because you won't give me any new prescriptions unless I have a medical review like medicine review and she said yeah I said, well, I need a prescription because my medication's running out, and the bus hasn't turned up. It's not my, f it's not my fault, you know. The thing just hasn't turned up. And she said, yeah. And I said, please, 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 can I be seen? And they said, well, she said, hold on spoke to someone and they said uh, she came back and said if you're not here by 10 past then you're going to lose your appointment and then I heard a voice in the background shout out is he on the bus yet and she said no he's not on the bus well he ain't going to get here then is he and I didn't kind of get involved in that I said, okay, but I'll, I'll come in. And she said, well, if you're not here by 10 past, then you won't be seen. And about a minute later, two minutes, I don't know, one, earlier it was one minute to, or two minutes to one, the bus turns up. And I just, there's two people that came after me because I've been waiting for ages and they get on first. Like, well, the young person, he just automatically goes to get on first because he, well, it's young and he doesn't, doesn't have that. That, I think that part of the brain of letting people on who've been waiting for it before 
or letting elderly people sit down seems to be missing in the in the more fresher brain the more younger brain and maybe it was when I was a kid as well I don't know but um, but then you know kind of logically I think well it doesn't matter the bus can't leave until we're all on so I go but and I said to the bus driver oi what's happening with the bus how come is there some problems with the traffic or whatever and he said don't know what you're talking about golf don't know what I said well did the half past twelve bus didn't turn up he said don't know what you're talking about gov when it just started gov I said okay so I thought you know what standing here talking about it is only going to slow the journey down so I better get on the bus and then the bus drives round and there's people waiting because so obviously they've been waiting for maybe half an hour Eventually I get to the stop where I'm going and get off, walk and I'm waiting to cross the road. It's really busy roundabout and so I'm waiting to cross the road to get over and it's like the side of the roundabout if that makes sense to cross over it then walk up and then cross the zebra crossing to get to the doctor's surgery so I try and stop the traffic's not stopping so in the end I just stand and I put my hand out in, in front of me to stop the traffic so I could get, for it, so I could get across and some bloke walks in front of me. Couldn't believe it. I stop the traffic and he walks ahead. I should be at the front. Anyway, I get across. I get across, feeling cross. The traffic on the left were quite friendly and stopped. But on the right hand side. I mean today, I actually crossed the road the same position, same place and a car didn't indicate so I basically it was stationary so I cross and so it just like speeds up and heads towards me and like didn't indicate or anything but didn't slow down either oh, that's why I wish I was Superman I would I just stand there I just crushed the car. Oh yeah. Anyway, the I get to the doctor's surgery. In fact, I'm you know I'm I'm not in the most uh, jovial position. I'm not feeling that jovial. So I get there, and there's a sign saying if you've got an appointment uh, then you have to book in using the big the screen I call it the uh, the germ spreader so basically it's a big screen where it's like McDonald's and stuff have now or at train stations you know where you or bus stations are you know press a screen and it uh, you book yourself in basically all these people with various illnesses and diseases and whatever else all using the same screen yeah great so I didn't want to touch that I get there 12 minutes past okay it's quarter past but by my clock bearing in mind I've got an iPhone so it's should be exact it was 12 minutes past one but according to their clock it was quarter past one so I'm going to go by my my phone but there's no one on the reception not a single person so I'm knocking 
I'm knocking, I'm knocking on the, the, the thing. And someone says to me, oh, it's no one there. They're all on, they're on lunch break. They're on lunch break, yeah. So you're just signing over on that thing. So I went over, I thought, fair enough, if, if that's what I've got to do, that's what I've got to do. I'll play the game. So I go to sign myself in and wouldn't allow it. Probably because my appointment time was gone. That's the thing I can imagine. So I'm there. Nobody to talk to. Why are they opening up the surgery if they've got no staff? to deal with the customers but anyway and I'm knocking and I'm knocking banging on this desk trying to get someone to come over nothing I could hear them so they could clearly hear me but they just didn't come out I didn't know what to do so I'm standing there for five minutes <laughs> trying to like what what am I supposed to do here so if I had got there at ten past there'd have been no one there anyway because their lunch break is at one till two so there'd have been no one there to tell the doctor and then I looked around and I saw I saw someone in one of the uh, I think it was a nurse in one of the rooms in the distance one of the medical rooms and I thought ah so I went in and I spoke to her and she, she knew who I was so I think it might have been her that I spoke to on the phone and I said she said well I can't guarantee you'll be seen I said uh, okay I just I left it but I wasn't I needed a prescription but I was like oh, okay I said, shall I wait out there? She said, well, yeah. I can't sit in there. I said, why not? She said, nee. I thought, which was quite a strange reaction. And then she started twirling around, singing. I said, what are you doing? She says, all I want for Christmas is a pepper pig. All I want for Christmas is a pepper pig. I thought, wow, okay. I'll wait outside, so I did. Not outside, outside, but in the uh, the changing rooms or, I don't know, the reception area or whatever you want to call it, the waiting room. And I was like, ugh. Oh. And she said, she came out about 10 minutes later, or five minutes, 10, whatever, and said, well, I spoke to the doctor, and uh, the doctor said just to wait, and she'll see if she can. So, I'm just sitting there, I'm sitting there, people are going in in front of me, and i got no idea even if I'm going to be seen or not. And I don't know what time I was seen, but I was out of there by about two, just after two o'clock, I think. Yeah, I think it was just after two in the afternoon. So I was there for about 45 minutes. And the doctor was lovely. She did see me. And she did deal with the situation and all that stuff. But, and she was, you know, it's really, she measured me. My, my height, that is. And she, I said, look, I'm five foot eight. I've always been five foot eight. I'm not at that age where I'm shrinking yet, surely. I know people shrink as they get older a little bit, but not like majorly. 
but uh, you know it's just a spine thing isn't it and sometimes uh, posture and she said uh, she wouldn't tell me what I was in foot and inches she just gave me the centimetres I said what is that in foot and inches she said she wrote down a piece of paper and she just gave me the number in centimetres and she said Google it when you get home. <laughs> I think she said, Do you have an internet? Do you know how to use Google? I said, <laughs> she said, Google it. So I thought, Okay. And uh, she weighed me, and I was about 97 kilos. And then checked my chest and flick my nipples no she didn't she checked my chest she uh, she didn't do an ECG because it had already been done by the doctor the ambulance a few days ago so she she checked my lungs with the stethoscope is it yeah so she listened to my chest so she put them on my bosoms and then I think she listened to my back. I had to breathe in and out. And she said my lungs were clear. And she said, go away. <laughs> go away. So I did. But she was really, really nice. And... that was the entire oh yeah it's not just the entire story there's a story about my chair but I'll tell you about that probably in the next recording because there's not enough time now because I've used my my allotted hour that I give myself for this thing more than an hour 67 minutes nearly 68 minutes <sighs> so thank you for listening Off. Oh, my bum's all numb. Two hundred and thirty-one. So I've done sixty-eight minutes. I got two hundred and thirty-one minutes left to record. So sixty, one twenty, two forty. 60, 120, 240. So I've got five hours. I could record for five whole hours. I'm not going to. But I could record a five hour session. Or go live for five hours. Wow. 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 Anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Please remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Take care. Speak to you soon. Lots of love.